The Honourable Simon Mr. Bridget. Speaker, I asked to speak on this bill, and I didn't do that because I'm some sort of a trade expert. I'm not. In that regard, I'm a lot like the speakers we've heard from on the Labor Party uh, benches, Mr. Speaker. But, uh, and, and I don't know the future of TPP, uh, TPPA. Uh, I don't know the short, the medium term, what it holds, but I do have high hopes for it uh, over the future. But what I do know, Mr Speaker, is this, that free trade works for New Zealand and it has made New Zealand a fundamentally much more prosperous nation than it ever would have been otherwise, and that in TPPA we have a massive opportunity uh, in this country, and we are much more prosperous as a result of the free trade trade agreements we have done and those uh, that are coming. And you know, Grant Robinson says, "Well, what, what is the plan? Uh, what is the strategy?" Well. Mr Speaker, it's the same strategy we've had the entire life of this government. It's the same one we saw under actually the governments of, of, uh, of Douglas and Cagle, the, actually the, Doug, the governments of uh, Clark and uh, Gough, for that matter, and that is to maximise our international free trade opportunity. It's not complicated, Mr Speaker, as a strategy. And let me state the, the blindingly obvious in relation to this uh, issue. We're not China, we're not the United States, we're not a big country with massive uh, domestic markets that can sustain our economies. We're like a cork bobbing on the ocean and we need to trade and we need to be in these multilateral trade agreements to maximise the benefits for our country and to make us a freer, a more prosperous country, Mr Speaker. And here's the thing about all of that that the others don't get. And you heard it in David Clark's speech where he effectively said that there was nothing in this for anyone. This isn't about the bankers. This isn't about the fat cats that, uh, that Dr Clark likes to caricature, uh, that see, somehow stand to gain so much from all of this. This is about regional New Zealand. They want TPP, Mr Speaker. I know that. Uh, the, the member opposite said, no, they don't want this, they don't know. I know, uh, with all of the people I've talked to in, the Ta in Tauranga, in the Bay of Plenty, uh, uh, Todd McClay, the Minister of Train, Rotorua knows that, uh, Todd Mullen knows that, because we get out and talk to our constituents, that we know that in regional New Zealand, across the value chains, uh, whether it's in kiwifruit, avocados, services, high-tech uh, manufacturing, that there are jobs and higher-paying jobs created as a result of free trade and would certainly be created as a result of TPP. We've seen it in the, the others we've done. We've seen it in the Korean FTA, where every kiwi fruit goer uh, in the Bay of Plenty, 14,000 on average, wealthier, and the people under them in the chain uh, are wealthier, with more job security as a result of that. Something like 40, over $40 million uh, per annum into the Bay of Plenty economy, just from, that we wouldn't have had, just from the Korean Free Trade Agreement. And we know that the opportunities with this Free Trade Agreement that we're here talking about in Parliament uh, would be much, much more. And while the other parties on the opposite have consistently voted against this bill, have shown their opposition on this side of the House, we know that free trade works for New Zealand. It has made us a much more prosperous nation and will continue to do so, and that the real beneficiaries of this are in regional New Zealand. They're where the real benefits of bills like this and free trade agreements like this come.